Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Four Minute Film School. I'm Ted with the A-Team. Today we're going to be going over the six things to watch out for when boom operating. I'm here today with Stephen Harrod. Now, Stephen Harrod is a professional working in production sound. Uh, he's worked on things ranging from Vice to BuzzFeed to feature films. Chances are you've actually heard his sound before and you don't even realize it. So, Stephen, what is the first thing to watch out for? The first thing to watch out for is you. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of the boom operator's job is you're on set, you're in people's eye lines and you know, you're interacting with actors. Mm -hmm. So part of that job is making sure that you are keeping a low profile. I feel as, as a, an operator that uh, if I'm just being as least distracting as possible, mm -hmm. that, that things are just gonna go smoother. You know, I'm like a, you're, you're a sound ninja. The second thing to watch out for is the rehearsal or the blocking. How's the scene gonna turn out? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna move where at what time? And you know, who says what line at, at different points? It's super crucial that you are in on that and you're watching what the actors are doing. It's a, it's a dance. It's a very, you know, complicated, um, well-rehearsed dance. Yeah. Well-rehearsed in ideal situations. That's and that's, that's what I love about the job so much, actually. The third thing to watch out for is the lighting. Um, why is that important? So it affects me in that if I'm throwing a boom overhead, mm -hmm. I need to make sure that I'm not casting any shadows on anybody mm -hmm. because, you know, if I get in there, uh, you know, if they see me on somebody mm -hmm. or on a back wall or something. You can you know. affect the actual shot. And get yeah, in the way I could blow it. I could blow a take. Yeah. Don't be that boom operator that casts shadows, which yeah. is why you watch the lighting mm -hmm. to see where they're gonna set up and to see most of all where you can be. Yeah. It's gonna be a good spot that you can get good audio, but then also you are not in the way of lighting. The soft lights like uh, Kinos mm -hmm. or, uh, or soft boxes. Soft boxes. You know, you're sitting pretty in, in my book usually because it's it's very soft and uh, shadows can be very minimal depending on you know mm. how they're set up. And the opposite of that would be a like super... a super harsh light. Yeah. Um, it, it also depends on kind of the tone of your movie. Like if you were doing a, a noir film or something mm -hmm. like that where everything's very shadow based, that's where you would have to really. Um, that's a minefield for you. Yeah. Because... You, you gotta step up your A game uh, in terms of that and uh, just make sure that you're not you know throwing it over people's faces or on back walls or, or wherever. Well, besides the camera telling the story, it also determines where you should be standing or, mm -hmm. or where you shouldn't be standing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, you know, a lot of guys these days, we're all about the handheld in cinema. Mm -hmm. or we're all about being on a gimbal or a movie or whatever. This mm -hmm. directly affects my job as a boom operator because the shot's gonna change, mm -hmm. you know? It's not it's not the 19 diggities anymore where yeah. you just set up a camera and, it and just, people well, talk. That's your friend one you know, and you just never yeah. have to move your boom. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, so just being aware of where that camera is when I'm moving, I'm, my the front of me is always to camera. Yeah. I'm never doing, you know, back to camera because then I can't see what's going on. So gotcha. I'm making sure that the action, I can see the action, but then I can also see where the camera's at in case they're doing any sudden movement. Yeah, so why is the camera lens important? Well, because the camera lens is determining what kind of shot it is, and what kind of shot it is determines mm -hmm. where me, as a boom operator, <laughs> can be. Gotcha. So basically, uh, why, why couldn't you just look at it on the monitor? You could, and then ideally you would in a perfect world, but oftentimes that's not the case, you know? Sometimes, yeah. uh, well, everybody's crowded around the monitor yeah. half the time anyways. So you might not get a chance. So having a knowledge of camera lenses and you know what their focal length is, mm -hmm. and if they're doing any zooming, if they're on a zoom lens, and, mm -hmm. and changing that focal length is it's um, it's crucial in me doing my job. Gotcha. And you, as the boom operator, need to know. Oh, before we were on a thirty-five, now we're on a one hundred. And if you don't have the time to go back and see that monitor. You need to be able to just say, okay, 100 is much tighter, so I can probably come in this close. Yep, you just gotta throw in. Yeah, so in this case, bigger is better. Yes. Bigger is better. Higher the number, the, the safer you're probably gonna be. So why do the other departments matter? You're the sound department, you got one thing to worry about. Let's it is, and as much as I would like to say that it is an elitist thing of me sound and nothing else matters, that's yeah. completely counterintuitive and counterproductive to the process of filmmaking. Yeah. <laughs> so, as much as my job is a technical dance as well, it's it's also a quality control, I would mm -hmm. say, too, in my relationships with other departments. So that's our episode of 4 Minute Film School. I'm Ted from the A-Team, and this is Stephen Harrod. Uh, make sure to comment below about what else a sound operator needs to watch out for, and we'll be giving out 
two Aperture microphones this week, the Aperture A-Lob and the D2 microphone. Uh, so we'll be picking the best comment below, so comment, and we'll catch you guys next time.